Hi, YouTube. We're back. You may notice here in part 34 that Aloy is not positioned where she was when I finished the last episode. And this is because I took it upon myself to very briefly take a breath and kick down some ladders and get back to the point where we can jump on the higher part of the tall neck because I already believe that I wasted a bunch of your time at the end of the last stream and I don't want to waste any more of it at the beginning of this one. So when old tall neck comes around, hopefully we'll jump up, things will be all hunky-dory and we'll be on our way. I appreciate so much that you made it through the last episode and that you're back for this one. I'm excited to see what this episode has in store for us. Please uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Those of you that have been leaving comments, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to do that, no matter how long or small. Thank you so much for your engagement on these videos. It really helps push us into the algorithm and get more eyeballs on these streams. So you're fabulous, and I appreciate that a lot. Please follow the links down in the description. Come hang out with us on Twitch. I really love when people pop into Twitch chat and say hi and that they've been watching the YouTube videos. It happens almost every night now, and it's very cool. So, all right, without further ado, we have daylight. We got old Mr. Tallneck coming around, and we got a calmer Dr. Mick. I'm human. I, I'm, not, I'm not Mr. Stoic, keep it calm all the time. I get frustrated at stuff. I feel like it's good to represent that every now and then. But uh, I've already made the journey over here so that when that big old dummy comes around here, we can jump right on. You know how we do. I killed two monkeys on the way, by the way. Two of them dumbass baboons. Like, this thing just... It just... It's such a long walk. What a thing of beauty, huh? Okay, next racetrack's up there. Yeah, you go to the bulwark, the pitmaster. I think we already were up there. I don't know. See, I like when we get all this stuff unlocked. Locked pad. Good. Good. Got another cauldron up there. Love it. Yeah, there's still more map, man. It's it's wild. As we got one more tall neck. <laughs> wild shit, yo. Now that we're refreshed. I guess I could go clear that rebel outpost on the way. I'm gonna do that. Making our way up to Demeter. 
I'm actually, I'm gonna be interested to see what, like, the actual mission around getting Demeter is going to be. What do we have here? Meh. Monkey. Slinging your fire poo. I was not expecting that. Alright. Can't see. I didn't come here to fight machines. You want a piece of me? Raptor's dead. Oh, boom. Where are you at, leader man? There you are. Hiding behind your little bitch ass shield. Oh, this one's got some of those tags I keep finding. Tags from fallen soldiers. Done. I should get these back to Duca. Without a leader, the rebels should abandon this place. But I could always deal with them now. Either way, I'm done here. Oh, I'll deal with them now. Try to poison this monkey. Oh my 
Oh my goodness. There we go. I'm like Michael Myers, but with a bow. Just keep coming straight at you. Relentless. won't be causing any more trouble. Boom. Good shit. All right, I'll be right back. We we'll go tuck my wife into bed, and we'll make our way up to Demeter. Now this place is chilled out. Oh, be right back. Good to go. Tides reach. Uh, that's backwards. All right, we'll figure that out later. We're gonna go. We're gonna go up to Demeter. I think it's about time. Coordinates that Gaia gave me for Demeter are close. Yeah, buddy. I'm ready. I love how green this area is. Big ass redwoods. Oh, this is great. Oh shit. All the bodies are to knock. Someone managed to take out an entire squad. Son. One thing's for sure. I'm not alone out here. Oh boy. I doubt it's silence. There's lights in that ruin. I better keep my guard up. Down. Move in. The barbarian. Oh boy. Oh shit! Look at these guys' armor. Okay, whoever these people are, it looks like we're not gonna be friends. And I'm mad about it. I need to get past these hostiles and into the ruins. This looks like a Last of Us sequence. Oh god. Barbarian. I haven't heard anybody refer to a to me as a barbarian before. Ha! Fucking idiot. And why are they out for blood? I better get to Demeter fast in case there's more of them. Well, these guys are stupid. It should be somewhere in these ruins. All brawn, no brains, man. Just, just. Blowing themselves up. Total Last of Us vibes.
Quen Marine. Quen. Fast biotech. Oh, man. Looks like some sort of old office complex. The greenhouse. Research facility. Agritech. Environmental remediation. Organic waste management. Whatever your company needs, here at the greenhouse, we'll help solve your problems. Naturally. A pharaoh research facility. Oh. We'll help solve your problems naturally, huh? Old Teddy, at it again. Old Cousin Teddy. Code fragment, aberrant code recovered from the greenhouse FAS facility. Function true. I had a dream, which was not at all a dream. The bright sun was extinguished, and the stars did wander darkling in the eternal space, rayless and pathless, and the icy earth swung blind and blackening in the moonless air. Morn came and went, and came and brought no day, and men forgot their passions in the dread of this their desolation, and all hearts were chilled into a selfish prayer for light. And they did live by watchfires and the thrones, the palaces of crowned kings, the huts, the habitations of all things which dwell, were burnt for beacons, cities were consumed, and men were gathered round their blazing homes to look once more into each other's face. Happy were those who dwelt within the eye of the volcanoes and their mountain torch. A fearful hope was all the world contained. Function true. Ooh. Neat. I like shit like that. Hey, look, it's those things I can Another never get flower. past. Demeter should be right beyond that door. But those vines are blocking the way. Unless I can cut through them, I'm gonna need to find another way in. Dude, we're gonna do so much exploring once we figure out how to get past those things. Good thing I have Herculean strength. A difficult beginning. Text log, data corruption minimal. Tala Aquino. Or Aquino. Personal log, the greenhouse, September 4th, 2043. Science is a process of discerning patterns, finding a sense of order amongst the chaos. Never has that been more pertinent than today. Here at the greenhouse, between the construction bots, the strewn wreckage from last night's storm, the howls of protesters who don't even know the nature of our work, amongst all this, we must find method. All week the verts have been delivering sets of bewildered faces, and I've promised my paymasters that these looks of stunned incredulity hide some of the world's top minds. From which ideas will sprout that can feed a starving world if we work fast enough? 
If we knew what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? Albert Eisenstein. So we strike out from the shores of the known and swim into the deep oceans of the possible, knowing that we must find something before the world drowns. But does that man who's guiding us understand the work we must do? There's no doubt that Ted Farrow is a business savant when it comes to robotic assistance, but does he grasp the science as well as the marketing? He and his board can sense what the world wants from a fashion app, but the choices they make will now determine whether a million starve here or a country falls into the void there. Farrow's grasped that, the fact that action is necessary, but can he really be a force to save the world? You're asking the real questions. Log. Just got off the line with U.S. Robot Command. Time's running out. I didn't have the heart to tell Harris that our cure might be worse than the disease. Even if adamantine wreath works, we still have to prove we can curtail the trailing plants efficiently. But Cobble's team is working on it over at Test Station Ivy. He'll come through. He has to. Adam Benteen Wraith. Another secret project. Well, they made the metal flowers here and the vines, so... Maybe I can find a way to destroy them. If I can find Test Station Ivy... How do I get out of here? Probably the way you came in. They want me dead. I better be careful. Had a mantine wreath. I love that there's going to be lore even for those things. Like, that's fantastic. It's not just some, like, random blocked away kind of deal. Oh, look how gorgeous. Oh, my lord. Okay. Oh, I could take those soldiers out quietly. When do I ever do that, Aloy? When do I ever do that? There's a barbarian in the compound. She got past the lookouts. Find her, kill her, and bring her head to the lieutenant. Or not. You okay? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hit your friend, dude. Hit your friend on your way to hitting me. Oh, God. You'll suffer. Being so well armored. Of trying to kill me. Me too. Oh. This courtyard.
Give me the good stuff, baby. Elite Blast Trap. Oh. Berserk Hunter arrows are now available. Fire these arrows at human or machine enemies to build up the Berserk state. Once they, once in this state, they will attack the nearest target regardless of whether they are friend or foe. Wear down the strength of your opponents by making them fight each other! Exclamation point. Cool. Probably won't. That door looks promising. I submit. Do as you will. I didn't want to fight your friends out there. They attacked me. If by death alone I can atone our trespass. Look, I'm not gonna kill you, okay? I just want to figure out what's going on. Where did you get that focus? Uh, I'm of the chosen people. The Quen? The Ancestors left the power of the Focus to us alone, the Eye that reveals the Legacy. The Legacy, huh? The Legacy? Uh, the Truth. Now, it is in the darkness and the lost places, among the ancient ashes and the bones of the before that it lies waiting. You know, as a Diviner, it is my task to seek it out for the good of my people. You're looking for data. Maybe we can help each other. What's your name? Alpha, second diviner of the Eastern Expedition. I'm Aloy. Why don't we start again? All right, well, we're going to learn more about this stuff, obviously. Um, as a reminder, chat, please do not post spoilers. This includes reactions to the people that we come across, because I don't know who's cool and who's not. Um... I mean, this has been, I, we talked about this a bit, but it feels worth re-mentioning here again, which is that it makes sense why we have all of these different tribes that have essentially like a religious spin on the way that they like cultivate their group existence. Because when humans don't have answers to things, they will tend to fill the gaps themselves with this kind of stuff. So I'm going to be fascinated to learn more about them. If you're Aloy here, you, you got to tread a bit carefully and try not to make assumptions about what it is that she says. Like, you do well in these types of scenarios to be curious about a person's perspective on things and what doctrine leads them rather than trying to like show competence. Like Aloy has no reason to be competent about these people and their drives and motives and all that stuff. Like she shouldn't know anything about them. So ask questions, be curious, seek to understand, look for commonalities, Maybe be you can be a bit dodgy in how much you provide about your agenda if you need to in Aloy's case, but uh, I'm going to be interested to see what happens here because we we potentially have a whole group of people here that have an entire way of orient themselves to reality that is different from our own, and if Aloy's not careful, she's likely to maybe look at them as wrong or misplaced or whatever, and you don't want to start off on that foot. I've never heard of the Quen. Our lands lie across the Great Ocean. We haven't been here before. Oh. So why come now? Our homeland has been ravaged by freakish weather. Terrible storms and blistering droughts. The crops are failing. The people are starving. When we looked for answers, it was proposed that if we had the courage to cross the ocean to Legacy's landfall, then we might earn the knowledge we need to save our people. But so far, that knowledge has eluded us. So, your people call this place Legacy's Landfall? No. Uh, landfall is where we arrived. To the west, in the shadows of the sunken city by the Broken Bridge. You mean San Francisco? 
Yes. You're well versed in the legacy. It was a place of great importance to our ancestors. We had hoped to learn their secrets there, but so far that door remains closed. Even so, the data we discovered there has led us to this place. It might be our last chance. To find something that can save your crops and your people. Yes. If the ancestors will be generous to us once more. <laughs> oh, it's so cool, man. So you call data from the ancient past the legacy? Yes. All that is not lost or forbidden. What does that mean? All that we are capable of reading and that which is permitted. Okay, I'm not sure I get it. That's fine. Um, so what do you use the data for? The greatest secrets are the ones that improve the lives of many. How to tend our crops, how to hold floodwaters back, or even cross the ocean. Technology. That is what I seek here. Technology that can help my people back home. Uh, Aloy being flippant about that book is a real reflection of her lack of tact. Like, that is clearly a cherished text or something for Alva like it's it's obviously important and Aloy just like picks it up and like kind of like tosses it on the table like it's nothing because to her it is nothing uh Alva is being quite kind there in the way that she is allowing Aloy to just barge her way through that but if you're Aloy there you should pay attention to that body language Pay attention to the fact that she got jerky there. That she went to go, like, take care of the book after you set it down. And maybe ask a question like, hey, is, is this, like, delicate? Or like, hey, I don't, like, did I just screw something up? Maybe make the assumption that you're working with something that's of great importance to them. And just because it's not important to you doesn't mean it's not important to them. Like, you lose goodwill when you just flippantly barge your way through people's stuff like that. Like, it's a small thing, but it's the type of thing that is right now contributing to a first impression. And it's something that all of us need to be aware of when we're meeting people for the first time and when we're in an environment or around stuff that we don't fully understand. Like, treating people and their stuff with respect, even if it's not important to you, is a great way to build up the benefit of the doubt from people. Like, Aloy may have some stuff to learn here. Maybe not, but pay attention to that. Like, Aloy really has this tendency to just, if she doesn't think it's important, then it's not important. If, if And that really disconnects her from people when she meets them. And when she tries to maintain relationships with them. Those soldiers, they opened fire on me without warning. Why? Uh, it is the duty of the Quen to seek out the legacy and defend it from the ignorant and envious. Not that you seem ignorant. But back home, other tribes only mean us harm, and we were told the same was true here. Does that come from your legacy? The legacy is truth. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> oh, this is so, oh, this is so fascinating. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not entirely undifferent from what's been happening over here in the States. Like, this is... It, it, it's the it's the I don't use this word lightly. It's the natural progression of society. Like it's just people vying for power, control, and influence. It's like at the end of the day, 
we're all animals, man. We're just animals that have a bit more sophisticated of a brain to be able to develop all sorts of abstract symbols and language and bullshit that holds people down and puts people in boxes and blah, 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 blah. Like, that's all we are. So what's happening over there is what's happening over here. And the thing is, Aloy is at a huge disadvantage right now because Aloy has no idea what any of that stuff that's going on over there is. No idea. Just now is learning that there were even people across the ocean. As far as she knew, there were only people in our immediate vicinity in the States. So Aloy has to be very careful not to try to draw a bunch of conclusions about what's going on. And I believe that Aloy would be smart to not necessarily be antagonistic or polarized against Alva here. But you absolutely want to take the stuff that Alva says with a grain of salt because you are getting but one perspective. Remember, imagine if we had started Horizon Zero Dawn as a Karja instead of as a Nora. What we might have thought the Nora were. Right? Like we have been biased from the very beginning of the game by virtue of the fact that we were born into the Nora and we started with the Nora and had their perspectives on things and only through exploring the world have we diversified ourselves. Think about what we would have thought about the Tanakh if we didn't go out into the Forbidden West and actually engage with the Tanakh. We'd be sitting in Meridian thinking that they're a bunch of just absolute barbarian heathen cannibals because we didn't have the experience to adjust our schema of them around. So what Alva says about the world she comes from is an incredibly biased and myopic point of view. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like I, I'm not, I'm not going to be hard on her for that, but Aloy has got to be very careful with the, her, with understanding the motivations and what it is that she says. And when she says the legacy is truth, oh baby, that's the kind of thing that like, there, oh. look, we don't know what we don't know what reality is. Like we we don't know what the truth is. We know, we can use our eyes and ears to try to develop some sort of understanding of the world around us. But I generally believe that you should be skeptical of anybody who claims to know that a thing is like the absolute, unbiased, God's honest truth. So when she says the legacy is the truth, like. That's a very helpful thing for us to know that she thinks that way because that means there's probably going to be some walls we're going to run into if we try to engage in certain types of like conversations with her. And it's just something you file away in the back of your mind like, oh boy, this person says the legacy is truth. I, I, that is a doctrine that I very likely am not going to be able to penetrate if she's going to say it with that much conviction. And so Aloy needs to adjust herself accordingly. This is really cool stuff. We have been known to misinterpret it. <laughs> oh, man. I wish I would have waited for that line. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh, the legacy is truth, but we've been known to misinterpret it, which gets us into the very cool conversation about the nature of, like, reality itself. Like, what is the objective truth? Is the truth actually is there an actual objective truth or is the truth only what we perceive it to be and how we interpret it to be like there's different schools of thought on this right like if they believe that a message is saying to them from the from the the legacy like let's say that the legacy says um Montana Recreations is the most powerful conglomerate and you should find your way to the States because whatever Montana Rec uh, Recreations has to offer you is the best thing in the entire world. And they misinterpret that to mean that there it's a powerful like military force or it's like the bastion of information about the wildlife of the world or something like that. 
is the truth what Montana Rec Recreations is, or is the truth what they've interpreted it to be and then created behavioral activation around? Like, these types of things get very sticky. That wasn't even that good of an example that I just gave. But, like, if you misinterpret... It's like when people... I, I mean, to use a real-life example, right? Like, is the if the Bible is truth or the Quran or some sort of religious text, like, is that the truth? Or, and we just have to interpret it correctly, but what happens if the interpretation of what was written in the Bible is never actually interpreted, interpreted correctly? Which one is the actual reality? Is it what the Bible says, or is it what has been interpreted and behavioral activation has been created off of? gets very complicated so when she says we've been known to misinterpret it well then like wait a second there's a lot of latitude there you can now use that information in not so great ways right now all of a sudden you might have people who are high up in their society who claim to be the ultimate interpreters of the legacy who then use that to perpetuate whatever their own personal power agenda is and influence the masses because it's been intentionally misinterpreted in order to grift people into subordinate positions. This is where this stuff gets really scary. And this is why it's problematic when we start looking at things as being the absolute truth because then it's like, who's telling you that it's the truth? Who's the one that's interpreting it as the truth? We have no idea what we're working with here. These people just tried to shoot me on sight when I showed up. Is it because of like, is it because of survival? Is it because of whatever their doctrine says needs to happen? Is it, is it like, does the legacy say that the people in the United States are problematic assholes because they created this whole problem, thus they're all dangerous? Like, we don't know what their information is. Look at the Tanakh. The Tanakh built their entire culture on museum hollows that were incomplete built their entire society on that that ostensibly could be the case for these people what act what part of the legacy do they have access to they don't have access to apollo as far as we know who knows what they think about us and what their agenda is. It's what makes these things very scary. I hope time and the wisdom of our ancestors will guide us down the correct path. Yeah. I hope so too. So her entire existence, as far as we know, their entire orientation to the world as a collective group of people is founded on the idea that the people of 963 years ago intentionally set out to guide us. Like, like really, just like let that sink in for a second. Their, their entire existence is built on that one idea that Ted Farrow and Elizabeth Sobeck and all the people of earth who were leaving these hollows and these text entries and these like all this data is specifically designed to guide us in a proper direction maybe but maybe not and if you believe that when you come across a hollow of concrete beach party how does that get interpreted by the quen versus us do the quen look at that and say like yes like stick it to the man because the people of yesteryear want us to 
fight co corporations and fight the fight the people in power and then do they have an uprising as the result of that because they believe fundamentally that they're being guided by the ancestors I mean it's just like whoa it's a hell of a thing to hang your hat on But we don't know what they had access to. We have no idea. So you said your ancestors left your tribe that focus? Yes. Thirteen diviners have possessed this one since it was discovered among the ruins in our homeland. I have their honored names committed to memory. So cool. you have one, but none of the soldiers out there did. We each have a role to play. No, it is the Diviner's purpose to seek out the legacy, interpret the wisdom of our ancestors for the good of all, and to keep it safe, so that no one but the Diviners know how to use a focus. Not even the Imperial family, and certainly not soldiers. I don't know about you, but if I'm Quen, that scares me. <laughs> that is... That is the state controlling education. In like... In the most extreme possible way. Like... Nobody gets access to this. It is my specific duty to interpret it. And to disseminate the truth of which we orient all of ourselves and our lives around. Like, that's scary, dude. Holy shit. Like, we don't... This, is, this would be like if... If there were like 13 people that possessed all of the research. Like, people do studies and then you get the findings and the research and stuff and then it goes to those 13 people and then those 13 people interpret it and then they decide whether the masses should know about it. If we take what she just said at face value. Like, that's wild shit. I'm all for trying to ensure that the only information that gets disseminated to the masses is good, high quality information. Like, I love that idea in theory. But the reality is when you put people into that much of a position of power to be able to disseminate that information, that's, I mean, information is an unbelievably underrated power like uh, amount of power to have like if you if you own the information of the ancestors that you've built your truth around that's wild and it's 13 people have ever used the focus yeah it's not like a it's not like a tribe of 13 people so maybe it is just her if it's just her that's ridiculous because then she should be way more armored than she is imagine that right like if the entirety of your society is built in this focus and she gets killed right now by Aloy and Aloy takes that focus then what happens I mean there's just so many problematic things happening right now as far as we know and everything I'm saying right now you have to take with a grain of salt because I'm reacting to this as we're getting the information we have an immense amount of like we are immensely limited in the what we understand about them but if we take what she's saying at face value this is a wild group here like, this could be a small, small, small sliver cult. Like, this could be the people of Jonestown that we're meeting and thinking potentially represent all of, like, Japan or Australia or wherever the hell they're coming from. When in reality, the reason that all of the other tribes are hostile toward them may be because they are this small group that possesses all of the resources and is trying to control the narrative and is really dangerous. Like, this is like, they could be a terrorist group for all we know. So how many diviners are there? At Landfall, a small group. Uh, back at home, a few dozen more. 
That's a guess. Uh, only the Overseers know for sure, and I am not of their rank. Okay, there you go. The cult of Jared Leto is representing an entire mass of people right now. Did I just say Jared? I meant Ted F Farrow. I'm looking for a place in this facility called Test Station Ivy. Have you found any data that mentions it? No. Uh, but I did find something that looks like a map. Uh, but it was unreadable. Lost. Maybe I can make some sense of it. Uh, there. There's a lot of files here. <sighs> I've been through all of them. Look in the GH facility section. Like I said, a lost file. You can't see the map? No! Oh. Don't give it to her. Whoa, 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 whoa! Looks like your focus is an early model. The operating system won't be able to read any files created after the mid 2050s. But I could share them with you. Whoa, 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 maybe not, maybe not, Aloy, maybe not. Oh, okay. Ah, boy. Okay. Information is power, my friends. That's a huge... These... The people that she's with just tried to kill you and have actively called you barbarian. I'm not saying that Aloy shouldn't necessarily share this, but Aloy needs to be careful with how she shares this because we have no idea what could happen if she is willing to share all of this additional information with this person like it would in my opinion, it would be smart for Aloy to be tactful with how she handles this. Where if she is like, oh, you don't see the map. You know, she could say like, I, I do. I don't know. She could say, I don't know why. Instead of saying you must not have an updated model. And now I'm going to share the plethora of information with you, information that I have no idea what you're going to do with it. Like, what does that mean? If they're looking for the same, like, if Aloy is trying to find Demeter, for example, we don't know her motivations entirely. If Aloy is trying to find Demeter so she can go to Gaia and she can give Gaia Demeter and make Gaia whole and all this stuff so that she can save the United States and potentially the world, and this person also wants to find Demeter and Aether and Poseidon and Gaia. And these people are potentially dangerous to us and are maybe willing to do the same thing to us that the Far Zenith people want to do to us. Where maybe these people don't give a shit about us. They want to take what they can. They want to take Gaia and go back to wherever they came from so that they can fix their land because that's what I would expect people to do at this point in the development of the repopulation of Earth. Well, now what, right? Like now, all of a sudden, this person has access to this information about all of these things that Aloy has found and we have just given her just open forum to potentially bring all of her people. Now, if there's only a dozen of them, we can probably take them. Right. So I do want to acknowledge it's a small group of people, but you just you we have no idea what we're working with here. So if you're Aloy, you might want to only share certain bits of information as necessary to assist you in making your own agenda happen until there is enough of a show of trust within this group of people. We just met her. 
She's kind. She's soft spoken. That makes her endearing. But like we have no idea the people that are behind her. She could be a pawn. She could be like Beta for all we know, where she's a pawn for the Far Zenith. She could be a pawn for these people. She could take this information and she could be like a uh, like she could be an amazing assassin and have and kill me immediately when she takes my information. Like we just we have no idea. Like, yes, I'm for data democratization in the grand scheme of things, not in this specific moment where it is potentially dangerous to us to give that information to her. Like, we've got to build some trust here and get some understanding going and find some common ground here before we just start willy-nilly giving her the most powerful thing we have. Because we have no idea what they're trying to accomplish. I could be wrong. She could be totally cool. The Quen could be totally fabulous, and I could be completely in the wrong, and it might be stupid for me to not share this information with her. I'm just telling you, like, in my opinion right now, I'm being careful. And again, I'm not saying Aloy shouldn't share. I'm just saying that Aloy shouldn't necessarily give her the whole bag of beans. Just, oh, I can see the map. That's interesting. Here's what I see. She doesn't have to share the map. She could just share what she sees, for example. You can see what is lost and forbidden. Not lost, not forbidden, just a newer format. There, that's where I need to go. Oh, but you can't get there. We've been here for a week trying to get deeper into the complex. The way has been blocked by rubble. Well, what about this tunnel? It looks like it unlocks from here. No. I thought these might be some kind of access controls, but I couldn't read enough data to make them work. Well, let's try with my focus, okay? I believe these consoles were meant to be operated in unison, but I'm not sure. Oh, I want to know more. I want to know more. Growing concern. Message log, data corruption partial. Data corrupted. We already have moderate but promising results from the insect protein initiative. Ted Farrow. It's a dead end. There are 12 competitors ahead of us on farmed protein. Our team's pushing to improve the yield, and once they've... No! Kill the program. Today. The plant gene sequencing stuff is where we've got an edge. But I want every program to link up to the harvester our robotics team is developing. You're talking about flushing six months of research. Our AI tells us the plants you're creating aren't robust enough for auto harvesting. You wanted me to feed starving people, Ted. That research, uh, research will help. We will feed them from a, fire, from a feral harvester. Oh boy. This is too sudden. We can't reconfigure everything that quickly. You have to think bigger, Tala. What was it you wrote to the team this morning? One of those quotes you're always throwing around? If I've seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants, Isaac Newton. Well, Newton didn't have the resources we've got, Tala. He couldn't dream of the horizons we can already see. We're the giants now. Oh boy, he's a... He's a trip. Okay, here we go. Following your lead. The ancestors have shown us the way. Come on, let's go. You want me to come with you? It took both of us to open up that tunnel, didn't it? All right. Oh, this place is a maze. According to the map, there should be another exit further in. Just stay close. Lead the way. Why is Aloy nicer to Alva than she is to Beta? Likely because she sees... So Aloy has a tendency to be kind to people that she perceives as useful to her. 
and people who are willing to be forthcoming with information. Alva has been both of those things. She seems to perceive Beta as being sort of like, I mean, there's aside from the self stuff that goes on with that that we talked about a couple episodes ago. I think, you know, Aloy, if you're useful to Aloy, she's cool. If she doesn't perceive you as useful, if she sees you as a burden, if she sees you as getting in her way, then she shuts it off. So she's nice to Alva right now. If Alva starts being a liability, I don't know that that kindness is going to keep extending. I can't believe you actually got us in. I was dreading having to stay here any longer with those soldiers. The way they slaughtered the barbarians that approached the site. It was like they enjoyed it. Most of my people aren't like that, I promise. It's a hell of a first impression. I mean, also imagine, like, just uh, also think about, like, how kind of arrogant that is. Like, I'm going to show up to your party at your house and then be actively hostile toward you at your house. I mean, they're essentially, like, the people who came over here from Europe and were like, the natives are hostile. Like, yeah, because you're coming onto their land and they don't, we have no idea what you want. You come out here with saws and armor and shit and you attack on site when you're in our territory? The hell? And and now that she's working together with the natives, we'll have we'll 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 develop second Thanksgiving to commemorate this beautiful time when I was strong enough to hold my own. Because I would be just another dead barbarian if I couldn't hold my own. Better stand back. That was loud. <laughs> yeah, it was. Admin wreath beer and dream two code fragment. A barren code recovered from the greenhouse FAS facility. Function true. Forests were set on fire, but hour by hour they fell and faded, and the crackling trunks extinguished with a crash, and all was black. The brows of men by the despairing light or an unearthly aspect, as by fits the flashes fell upon them. Some lay down and hid their eyes and wept, and some did rest their chins upon their clenched hands and smiled. And others hurried to and fro and fed their funeral piles with fuel and looked up with mad disquietude on the dull sky, the pall of a past world. And then again, with curses cast them down upon the dust and gnashed their teeth and howled, the wild birds shrieked and, terrified, did flutter on the ground and flap their useless wings. The wildest brutes came tame and tremulous, and vipers crawled and twinned themselves among the multitude. Hissing, but stingless, they were slain for food and war, which for a moment was no more. Did glut himself again, a meal was bought with blood, and each, st each sate sullenly apart, gorging himself in gloom. No love was left function true. There has to be a way out of here. Always is. One of these days I want to come into a room like this and there not be a way out of here. What's that thing on the wall? Look how strong I am, Alva. Look how strong I am. Through here. Um, I guess I'll wait here then. It's up to you. That's what you want to do. 
According to the map, the exit should be this way. I didn't miss anything over here. Where are you going? To the exit, Alva. You want to just stand in there? You can do whatever you want, but I'm leaving. Yeah, it feels like a tomb down here. Sure does. They fly to him from the complex several times a day. Only the ancestors know why. Well, the ancestors are dead, Elva. Of course. How else could they be ancestors? <sighs> Looks like we have more pressing concerns. Follow my lead. Life in the hothouse. Data corrupted. She sabotaged the project! You know how many lives could have been lost over an affair? We're working to see what data can be recovered. In the meantime, in the meantime, we spent weeks chasing results that have gone nowhere. Kachansky's project could have been the answer. Can we remember that Dr. Kachansky's libido played a big part in this? Not that big a part. Not helpful, Akrafi. Can we please concentrate on the plant propagation, not the human reproduction? Precisely. It is our job, our responsibility, to deliver these crops, which is why I am reassigning Dr. Samuelson to another team. She sabotaged a project, and she's staying? We will have, and we will all have to make up for the time we lost. How? We're already working nights and weekends. Which is cut down on levels of infidelity. Not helpful, Akrafi. Charles Darwin, a man who dares to waste one hour of time, has not discovered the value of life. We hold so much life in our hands, so we'll do whatever we have to do to finish the work. Albert Einstein, two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. Dr. Samuelson has proved that. Surely we can agree she has to go. She's staying. That comes all the way from the top. Pharaoh, of course. Not the kind of fellow to put ethics ahead of results. Enough. All of you, your objections are noted. Please do not persist unless you want me to take the messaging system offline. Ooh, give me that interpersonal conflict, baby. We can fight them, or try to sneak past. Your call. We could fight them? Here I am! Come and get me! That's where it's vulnerable! They're done! We should get going! I'll pick them all! I love how excited she is to know how to fight these things. Ah, that's their weak point! Like you do. Don't you forget it.
Hopefully you can climb and run like I can. A vent. I think I can pull it open. Got it. I'm right behind you. get through that hatch on the ground. It looks like the one we used at the first station. There's consoles up here too! But no way to get to them. You stay put. I'll see what I can find. Oh, baby. I think I can move these things. Grab the battery storage pack. There we go. Huh. There's some space back there. Hey, YouTube, thanks for being here. And those of you that are here on Twitch, thanks for being live with me. I appreciate uh -huh. all of your support of my playthroughs and that you help. are sticking through these and watching every episode even if you're whether you're bouncing around or whether you're watching the whole thing it means a lot to me that you support these playthroughs i hope that the analysis i provide is meaningful in some way as always i don't claim to be 100 percent right in my analysis it's just my perspective on things I so budge. i appreciate that you are the others interested in what i have to say about stuff so thanks for making the effort Warning me next time you decide to um uh, blow up a wall. I'll uh try. Can do. top of it I can get you to those consoles exactly hold uh, it there let me just come on I jumped on top hold on I'm gonna blow up a wall I'm just kidding Okay, I'm not gonna blow up the wall. That's good. Jumping over. <sighs> Made it. I'm at the console. But wait, there's data here. A lot, but it's blocked. Something's restricting access. If I can't get past it, my mission here is doomed. Alva, I'll help. If I can, okay? But first we have to get out of here. Right. We need to open the hatch. Okay, let's see. Okay. I'm unlocking a storage unit. There should be a power cell inside. Then you need to find a way into the generator room. Okay, I'm on it. It's really a good move there to refocus Alva back to what needs to happen in the here and now. You know, she you notice how she comes across that data and then immediately goes to catastrophe. Oh God, if I can't get past it, then my mission's doomed. That's completely useless to think about right now. Like there's no utility to thinking that way. 
we have a tendency sometimes when anxiety spikes or when we have an opportunity that we don't fully understand the scope of to uh, some folks will immediately go to the assumption that like the what if what if this fails? What if I can't do this without taking into account that the that conclusion only exists after a series of trial and error and engaging in the process and problem solving as best you can. So the, the answer to that question, right now is like, like, who cares? Right now, what's important is that we figure out how to get through this facility and do what we can. And then when we get to the point where we can access that data and try to discern through it, we will. But if you put the cart ahead of the horse too often with stuff like that and catastrophize, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Because now all of a sudden you're cultivating a bunch of anxiety that's taking you away from focusing on the task at hand. You're looking at the implications before you're getting through the actual process that's going to take you to the implications. So when Aloy sort of refocuses Alva there and then Alva gets to a point where she activates the console and unlocks the thing and does what she needs to do in the here and now, it's a great way to get her refocused so that she continues to be useful not just to Aloy but to herself. So a word to the wise, if you tend to catastrophize up front like that and just automatically assume the worst and go to the conclusion of something that's seven steps ahead of where you are right now, you've got to refocus yourself to what you can control in the moment and then trust that you'll get the information that you need to get down the line. The answer of whether you will be able to access that data will come eventually. Now's not the time to freak out about it and to give that a whole bunch of energy. I gotta move this. I found the energy cell. We did? Oh. me now on my way okay we need to operate both consoles simultaneously to open the hatch I'll get to the other console you stay here when you are. Okay, you ready? On two. One, two. Commencing adamantine reef vulnerability test scenario 12C15. Okay, that's where we need to go. Magnetic field engaged. Initiating biomass conversion process. What? Oh boy. No, 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 no. Oh boy. How do I shut this thing off? Failsafe exceeded. Test cannot be aborted. Oh boy. What is this? Oh, this is bad. That's what this is. This is bad. This is very bad. That's how the world ended. Test complete. Adamantine reef structural integrity uncompromised. Oh. Mmm. What did we just see? Alva, let's meet below. I'm going to share a file with you, okay? Test log. Um, uh, I think it's Tuesday the second. Who cares? I'll say this for the end of the world. 
jam-packed with irony. We developed biomass conversion here. Infinite food for infinite machines. And now we're racing against time to find something to give them indigestion. Well, it works. War machines won't be able to eat the reeds. But can we deploy them in time? God, I hope so. I don't understand. Your ancestors? They were wiped out. Your legacy didn't tell you that? The Time of Ashes. But most of the data about that is lost, or forbidden. Well, they created machines that consumed all life. You just saw how. It's a miracle anything survived. I don't want to know this. This is not why I'm here. I need the wisdom of my ancestors to help save my people, not forbidden knowledge of their sins. Will! I got news for you, Alva. You have to understand the ways in which people screwed up before in order to learn a different way to navigate adversity of now. Right? Like, if you don't pay attention to history, you're doomed to repeat it, yada, yada, yada. Right? This is why when you expunge human atrocity and all the bad shit that we've done slavery indentured servitude genocide all this stuff like no it's not fun to think about the fact that humans did this shit of course not no we don't like to believe that humans were capable of coming over here and slaughtering the natives and enslaving people for their own capitalistic gain like that's not fun to talk about there's probably people watching this video right now that here just heard me say that. And they're like, Ugh, I don't want to hear about it. Like, yeah, it's not fun. But there are reasons that those things happened. It provides so much context for the ways that we have developed. The history provides context for the present. So when she's like, I'm looking for information that's going to help my people. Well, you should understand the ways that shit went south. Because Ted Farrow didn't develop biomass harvesting robots because he wanted to destroy the world. That's not why he did it. So if like some of these things that were developed that became problematic were developed because they were designed to try to help people. So if you only want the good and you don't understand that good intentions can lead to bad outcomes, you are likely doomed to make a similar mistake. Like you have to see the bad shit that can happen. So, you know, I hate to break it to you, Alva, but if you're the person that has to be exposed to information and be the one that is the purveyor of truth, then you have to understand the realities of what it is that happened historically. You don't get to pick and choose. And this is why it's dangerous that they forbid, that they forbid this stuff and that they harshly control the flow of information. Otherwise, you start getting, you're going to start getting in the same way that there are people out there who are Holocaust deniers. You're going to have people who are... Pharaohbot deniers. People that may even come to worship Ted Pharaoh as some sort of pariah because he's a guy who had solutions for whatever. Right? Like that 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 could literally happen. Like these people could worship Ted Pharaoh as a person who had amazing ideas and got shit done if they don't understand the history and the context of what it is that he accomplished and didn't accomplish. So if you're a person that's averse to the atrocities of history, like, no, you don't have to expose yourself to all the awful things that humans have done in, your in, their, in the history of humanity. But, like, you do yourself a massive disservice to try to just candy land wash history. Oh, slavery didn't happen. It wasn't that bad. I mean, it was so nice of the plantation owners to provide sheds and 
clothes to the people. I mean, those people might not have had access to sheds and clothes if they weren't pulled over here on boats from Africa. Like, that's the kind of dumb shit you start saying if you don't actually understand history. I need to find something that helps, something to bring back. The overseers will punish me, or even worse, people will die. Do you understand? My family, my sister. I left her when she was 14. Already you could see her bones. They will starve. Alva. Yes. Alva, I get it. I do. It's hard to explain, but you and I are working toward the same goal. And if I succeed, your people won't need any data. Things will just... They will get better. But even if I believe you, my people won't. I need to bring something back. Okay. Then we'll go to Test Station Ivy. And if I can find a way to kill those vines, then I will have access to the data core. What I need is in there. I'm pretty sure that if I take it, it will unblock access to all the data that this place has. And that will give you something to bring home. I'm not sure I understand. But... Every secret makes its own maze. A diviner must persevere. There you go. Go on. There you go. I'll follow. We need to keep moving. Test Station Ivy can't be far off. Oh my lord. Okay. Shield wings holding up. Another maze. But the road to truth is never a straight line. So the metal flowers, what the data referred to as adamantine wreaths, they were supposed to stop the destruction that caused the time of ashes? Looks like it. I guess something went wrong. It locks people out of important side quests, I'm guessing. I mean, it's really cool. Like, people got desperate. You had to, to be an exit somewhere. figure out what you got to figure out. I mean, I, I'm I'm fascinated by this idea that, like, these vines are basically impervious or they cause problems for the, uh, like, for the biomass harvesters. So, I never asked. Are you from around here? No, I'm not. I uh, spent most of my life in a place for the beast. Well, we both traveled a long way then. Yep. <laughs> Cold and damp down here. This is it. Okay. Let's find a way to get into the proving ground. Oh no, this means I missed one because this is dream four. Then they lifted up their eyes as it grew lighter and beheld each other's aspects, saw and shrieked and died. Even of their mutual hideousness, they died, unknowing who he was upon whose brow famine had written fiend. The world was void. The populous and powerful was a lump, seasonless, herbless, treeless, manless, lifeless, a lump of death, a chaos of hard clay. The rivers, lakes, and ocean all stood still, and nothing stirred within their silent depths. Ships sailorless lay rotting on the sea, and their masts fell down piecemeal as they dropped 
They slept on the abyss without a surge. The waves were dead, the tides were in their grave, the moon, their mistress, had expired before. The winds were withered in the stagnant air, and the clouds perished. Darkness had no need of aid from them. She was the universe. Those are neat, man. That complex should be test station heavy. Well, let's hope it holds the answers we seek. It's so still. Yeah. Whoa! Think of that. It's one of those it's machines. A bat. It can turn invisible. Oh! We'll have to take it out to get into the test station. I have them! You with me? Yes. Can you use this? I don't need you to throw shit at me right now. Red wing. God for this pillar. Oh God, it goes invisible. Oh God. That was amazing. Uh, terrifying, but amazing. Well, you helped. No, you we didn't. should be able to get into Test Station Ivy now. All right. Well, I want to read about this thing because that was cool. Dreadwing, a large and powerful flying combat machine. Its attacks include a range of disruptive status effects, making it a dangerous and tenacious enemy. So it's literally just designed for combat? Huh. Interesting. Did I say that, Darkness? Imagine if there was a bat machine that we could fight, had to fight in this cave. I, did I really say that? <laughs> shouldn't linger here. There might be more machines. That's awesome. There has to be some data here on the adamantine wreath we can use. I trust your focus will see what mine cannot. Yeah. Makes me more powerful than you. Paraphrasing, but you basically did. It was one of the cauldrons we ran through. That's awesome. Oh. That's interesting. Find something? The fourth test station. Willow. It looks like it's underwater. Huh. That might be worth a look sometime. Feeding the world. Tala Aquino, personal log, the greenhouse, September 15th, 2047. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, Arthur C. Clarke. But you are supposed to understand the trick once it's done. The curtain pulls back to reveal the mirrors, yet I still have no idea how we achieve this act of scientific conjuring. It's not just the speed with which the projects have come together or the stability of the results, despite the complexity of bioengineering. It isn't even the huge variety of crops that can now be made more heat, drought, and disease resistant. It is a simple fact that all these results are tangible. No announcements in scientific journals, no celebrating predictions born from simulations. Our research has become manifest in physical artifacts. Where a dream took root in an abandoned industrial site four years ago, now there stands row upon row of automated FAS farming units, each of which can conduct gene manipulation in the field, the actual field. 
These robots analyze soil composition, light intensity, temperature, wind speed, and a hundred other factors. Then, utilizing the gene sequences we created, they can select or construct a plant to produce the best yields for that location. Of course, all the crops these units create are best harvested by other FAS machines, but when a population is starving, what government is going to quibble about being forced to use our robots to speed things up? Should I be uncomfortable? Watching Ted Farrow's coffers swell with money from the desperate and the starving? Maybe. But I know that it is his belief, money, and drive that has filled the world's empty stomachs. Desperation can only be experienced by the living, and we've given them back their lives. Us, our work Pharaoh's resources, science's triumph. Together, we've changed the world. Wow, thanks, Ted Farrow. I must have faith. I walk with the ancestors. We shall find what we seek. Yeah, don't, don't trip over that confirmation bias on the way there. But so much is still hidden from my focus. This console still operational. Another log. We're done in every way. The reeves work, and Carvel came through on a way to destroy them. Downloading a coded key into the deployment shell triggers an enzyme that causes the reeves to eat themselves from within. But it's too late. The latest projections from U.S. Robot Command have swarm reproduction outpacing our ability to drop the shells by 375 percent Ooh. not even close I, I guess we deserve this i deserve it for what i made here this will be my last log before evacuation So, all their efforts were in vain. They ran out of time. At least we have the software module they created. It should get rid of the vines produced by the metal flowers. I need a workbench to load the module into my spear. There's one back at our camp. The map showed a path leading back there past the next room. Neat. I love when they're conveniently in the next room. Yo, dog, I heard your robot was eating robots, so I made a robot to eat the robot that eats the robots. It's always a bigger fish. Marjane Nafisi has resigned. Tala Aquino, personal log, the greenhouse, August 2nd, 2049. From Marjane's letter, it is with regret that I resign. I share that regret, Marjan. You served as an excellent deputy, but no single person is above the team or the project. I came to create life, not destroy it. After all we've achieved together, I did not expect such lack of vision. Yes, our research has shifted direction, but biomass conversion is no different than burning wood on a stove or distilling ethanol from molasses. It is a method to release solar energy that was captured organically. Yes, there are military applications for this technology, but that does not mean there is a logical moral argument against biomass conversion itself. To say so is emotional petulance, plain and simple. Oh boy. The saddest aspect of life right now is that science gathers knowledge faster than society gathers wisdom. Isaac Asimov. For Nafisi to end her letter with a quotation made it a direct attack. Childish, disappointing, personal. Any sadness I might have had about her departure left me in that moment. I wish her luck with whatever position she's able to find, but the greenhouse will continue on all the stronger now that it is free from such narrow thinking. I'll sum up with another quote, one better suited to circumstances. Nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. Marie Curie. Oh boy. Tala. Oh no. Corrupted. It's scary stuff, man. 
when you have conglomerates that go in unethical, problematic directions and you have people with integrity that leave, it is often the case that those people are seen as like dissenting and narrow minded. It's a way to, to perpetuate whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish and make it seem like others just don't understand or aren't good enough. Uh, I mean, that reads to me very much like Tala Aquino basically joined Ted Farrow's line of thinking on things. Like the path to like unethical, crazy ass, genocidal, stupid shit, like what happened with the biomass conversion doesn't start with the idea of let's destroy the earth. There may even be the case of like the what if there of what if this goes completely wrong? Like what's the worst that could happen? I might make an argument that if the worst that could happen is that what you're about to do could destroy the world, you may want to rethink what you're doing. But that's where all the nuance and trickiness gets in with these what ifs, because you could say, well, don't indulge what ifs, just work with what you got in the moment. There's a problem at hand that needs to be solved. So do this. And then you, this is why you need multiple people sometimes in the room. You don't want a small, tiny group of people controlling everything there is to control, because if you have people with integrity who think about things in certain ways and provide a, dissent, a dissenting opinion, that's who you want to surround yourself with. You don't want to surround yourself only with yes men people who who just follow you into the dark unconditionally you want to surround yourself by people who are willing to challenge you who are willing to bring up poke holes in some of the ideas that you might have particularly if you're that steadfast and if you're in that powerful of a position of power you want to surround yourself by a diverse range of thoughts so that you potentially don't make stupid decisions like this the downfall of Talo Aquino just happened right in front of us That must be the fourth testing station we saw on the map. Looks like it's been flooded for a while. Yeah, so let's just unflood it for funsies. In here. We'll have to climb up. Right behind you! We can use the line to get down. Ah, uh, right. Easy. Uh, made it. You yeah. did it. The workbench you need. Dissolution code module. Done. Better make haste. Now what? Now, we get to that data core. As I was saying, I still can't believe you took on all these soldiers by yourself. But we'd better make haste. After we encountered barbarians, our lieutenant called for reinforcements. They could be here any time. Right. No, it's coming. See you in part 35, where we will open the data core. Mm, I know, I know. You saw it coming from a mile away. Of course you did. Thank you so much, my friends, for 
making it all the way through part 34. This was a lot of fun. We got to meet a new character. We get some extra juicy lore. This is good stuff. I'm all about it. Part 35 is going to be great. There's going to be lots of cool shit to do. So I'll look forward to seeing you over there. Please leave a like. Leave a comment. Even if the comment's just, I like this episode. Or, boo, you suck. Or whatever it is. You know, just I, your engagement is awesome. So thanks for that. And follow all the links in the description. If you are binging, well, I'll see you right on the next episode. You don't got to deal with the agony of watching these live. If you're waiting for the next one to come out, we'll get it out as soon as we can. Appreciate you all immensely, and I'll catch you on the next one.